Over the past 20 years, cars have been getting bigger and bigger. At the current rate of increase, the average car is projected to be the size of Trinidad and Tobago by 2025. Oh my God! By the end of this video, you'll know exactly why that is, and you'll be a bit depressed about it. Sorry. The problem is, whilst cars have been getting bigger, roads haven't gotten any bigger. In the UK, for example, space is extremely limited, especially in cities. And with more cars on our roads than ever before, and with those cars being bigger than ever before, we don't really have a sustainable way of accommodating all of those big cars, many of which would be more at home on an American highway than a London side street. The only way for roads to accommodate these big cars is to take away space from pedestrians. But pedestrians make up the vast majority of people in city centres, and urban roads already take the majority of space to serve the minority of people. Did you know that Norway sells way more electric cars per capita than the US? And cars aren't about to get any smaller. Smaller. Electric cars are the future. The UK government saying it, the US government saying it, and progressive countries like Norway switched to electric vehicles bloody ages ago. But anyone keeping an eye on electric cars coming to the market recently will have noticed a big parade of big cars. The Tesla Model Y, the Kia EV6, the Audi e-tron. If you put any of them side by side with an average car from the 1990s, they'll look massive. Do we need all this space in our cars? Are we constantly driving around with five people in our cars and two dogs and a load of luggage in the back? The answer is no. The average occupancy of a car in a journey in the UK is 1.1 people. So the vast majority of journeys just have the driver in the car and we're wasting all the rest of that space. And when you really think about that in the context of our city roads constantly being gridlocked, often with ICE cars polluting the local atmosphere, it just doesn't make any sense. A traffic jam is not a result of there being too many people on the road. Only 5% of that space is actually being taken up by people. A traffic jam is actually just a load of metal and rubber sitting there doing nothing. It's the result of the entire human race not really being able to agree an efficient way of getting a human from point A to point B. And cars are not just bigger now, they're heavier, which makes them less efficient and more dangerous to other road users and to pedestrians. The BMW 3 Series is nearly 40% bigger and 42% heavier now than it was was in the 1980s. The Fiat 500 is 50% bigger now and 70% heavier than it was in the 1960s. The beloved VW Golf is 40% bigger now and 63% heavier than it was in the 1970s. But the increase in size and weight of these models over the years is just a small part of the story. There's another part to this story and that's where things get downright cynical. In Europe, we used to be in love with the humble hatchback a Ford Fiesta or a VW Golf. But in the last 10 years, we've fallen in love with entry-level SUVs. We've been Americanized. New compact SUVs such as the Nissan Qashqai have exploded in popularity. Not really sure why, because it looks like a steaming pile of crap and it also drives like a steaming pile of crap. But we cannot get enough of these small SUVs. So why is that? And why is it only going to get worse? There are a few fundamental and inescapable reasons for cars getting bigger. And some of these are fine, we just have to deal with them. Let's take safety, for example. Cars have gotten progressively safer for drivers and passengers. In the 1970s, they were basically moving metal coffins ready to crush you to smithereens at the slightest hint of impact. A whopping 55% of car accidents in the 1970s resulted in at least one fatality. Nowadays, despite cars being bigger and heavier, that figure is down to 25%, which is still quite high. All those safety figures such as crumple zones, safety cells and airbags require extra space in the car. Even simple things like having bigger tires and bigger brakes help with safety, but they make the car heavier. But the problem with safety features in cars is that they're somewhat relative. The more safety features we build into a car, the bigger and heavier it gets, which means the more dangerous it is, which means the more safety features we need to build into the car, which means the bigger the car gets, which makes it more dangerous. And that means the more safety features we need to build into that car. And that means that the car gets bigger and somewhat heavier. You can see where I'm going with this. This is unfortunately especially true of electric cars, which due to the batteries that power them can weigh up to two tons. And when cars weigh this much and they're driven around our cities at 30 miles an hour, well, 
That's bad news for pedestrians who aren't fans of blunt force trauma and are fans of having all of their limbs. But in terms of the reasons that cars are getting bigger, safety is the only one that isn't slightly depressing and isn't downright cynical. So let's move on to our next reason. One unavoidable reason that people point to is that we're just all getting bigger. Every generation has been bigger than the last. We are getting taller, but mainly we're just getting chonkier. Whereas in the 1960s, a family of five could all pile into a Mini Cooper, the average size family nowadays needs something a little bit bigger or they'd be in extreme discomfort. So with the BMW 3 Series having increased 40% in size since the 1980s, has the average person increased 40% in size? Let's look into that. So the average American hasn't actually got any taller whatsoever since the 1980s, and the average Brit has only grown 10 centimeters in the last 100 years. So I think we can throw height out of the window as a reason for making cars bigger recently. But the average American has gotten 20 pounds heavier in weight since the dawn of the 1990s. That's well over a stone or in non-archaic measurements that's nine kilograms. That represents a 12.5% increase in the weight of the average American in the last 30 years. That doesn't quite chime with the 40% increase in the size of the BMW 3 Series. So why are cars getting so big then? The actual reason is unfortunately down to the psychology of marketing and sales. It used to cost a lot less money to produce a small car in comparison to a large car. So it made sense for manufacturers to build and sell small cars. It made sense for us to buy them as well because they were cheaper. But over time, the gap in production costs has narrowed between small cars and large cars. And us humans, we like big shiny things. Think about all of the status symbols in the West. We want a ring with a big diamond on it. We want a big TV. We want a big house. You want a big Dickensian top hat. And you want a big car too because it shows how much of a big, well-rounded person you are. We love big things so much that we'll gladly pay a lot more money for them, even though the production costs are the same on big items as they are on small items. And that's good news for car manufacturers because that means higher profits. As a society, we've also grown much more comfortable with the idea of taking out finance. And that's really good news for car companies. Not only do they get the profit from making and selling the car, they also make money from being a lender. Finance encourages us to spend more than we usually would. And that usually means going for a bigger model rather than the smaller one that might be more in our budget. And look, this is kind of on us as humans, but car companies actively use size as a signifier of quality in their car marketing. It won't actually be too long until car adverts look a little something like this. Oh my God, what is that? And with the current trend in electric cars skewing towards heavier, larger vehicles, this trend towards bigger cars only shows signs of accelerating. That's not necessarily a problem in the US where cities are built around roads and not the other way around. But in Europe, it represents a huge problem. Roads have not increased in size at the same rate as cars have. This problem is particularly exacerbated in residential areas where cars are parked on both sides of the street. So what's the answer here? Well, our big car obsession is an analogy for our general tendency towards excess, something we've been conditioned to buy into in the post-war era. Trends such as bigger cars and more food waste, more plastic waste, more pollution can't all continue indefinitely. And the same root cause is behind all of these things. Not to sound like a lentil-eating, sandal-wearing hippie, but we need to learn to live within our means. And when it comes to cars, we need to learn to scale back and think about where we want things to go in the future. Cars like the X-Bus, the Canoe, and China's Wuling Hongguang Mini are all examples of small EVs that you can very much easily live with. We have videos on all of these cars and I implore you to check them out. I'll put the links in the description below and please do go and watch them because it means that we'll earn more money on this channel, which means I can go and buy that massive Dodge Ram I've always dreamed of. Right guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And feel free to tell me whether I'm right, wrong, smart or stupid or just a liberal woke tard in the comment section below. Bye Electroheads.